Animation is very time consuming. It's like planting a garden, except you have to plant every leaf, every flower, and every single speck of dirt by hand. In my first game return, I did all the animations by hand. The player alone has 450 frames of animation. And with over 300 bosses, each with their own set of animations, along with environments and other characters, that's a grand total of over 3,000 frames of animation. Now in my new game, the player can equip chest plates, leggings, boots, helmets, and different kinds of backpacks. Because it's a looter shooter game, the player needs to be able to collect a lot of different clothing. That means they could potentially put together thousands of different outfits. And that also means each outfit needs its own set of animation. We're talking thousands of frames of animation. <laughs> I guess I should get started. But what if there's a better way? What if instead of animating each piece of armor, I only had to animate the player once? Sprites are made up of pixels, which are just a red, green, blue, and alpha channel. Since shaders read the RGBA channels for each pixel on a sprite, I can use the RG channels on a map sprite to represent an XY coordinate on a texture sprite. Then apply the color from the texture to the map. Since I'm not using the blue channel for anything, I can use this value to help differentiate different sections of the map sprite. To do this, I first create the base animation for the player and then take the base texture and apply it to each frame of the animation. I then import the map into Game Maker and use a skin constructor struct that will let me apply skins to a map and then draw them. To an object. Okay, let me show you guys what this might look like in Game Maker. So I've got these two map sprites imported and down here I have two skin palettes. Uh, the only thing you need to know about these sprites is that I have a separate texture page set for them. And then down here I have a prop object for testing. Inside the create event I've got these two variables set to the map sprite and the palette skin that I just mentioned. And then I have a skin object from a skin constructor. And then I'm calling these two methods from the skin object to set the palette skin and the map. Then inside the draw event we are just calling the skin objects draw method with the xy image from the OB prop object. Then I've got these two key press events that will swap the map and the palette skin just so I can show you what this looks like for testing purposes. Then we have the vertex shader. This is just a simple pass through shader with the 3D logic removed. And then inside the fragment shader, I have actually commissioned XOR to create this for me because when I started this project, I knew little to nothing about shaders, but now I can at least explain it to you guys. First of all, we are passing in a uniform sampler 2D, which will be palette sprite and then we're getting the texel size from that palette. Then we are sampling the map texture for the XY and alpha. Then we are reading the palette using the RG values as XY coordinates like I explained earlier. So we're taking the XY from the map multiplying it by 255 and adding 0.5 which makes sure we are on the center of the pixel for the palette. I've had some issues without that and then we're multiplying it by the texel size. And then finally we take the color alpha and multiply it by the map alpha and then set the GL frag color to the final color. Then inside the skin class, I'm just getting the uniform and the sampler index for the palette and the texel. Then I have these two variables down here set to the map and the palette skin. Uh, these will be set using set map and set palette skin. Then I have this apply palette method that will just get the texel width and height and set the shader and pass through the uniforms. And then down here I have the draw function or the draw method rather. And we just apply the palette from the palette skin. Uh, now the reason I don't get the texture inside of the apply palette uh, method is because you can also pass in surfaces and get their textures as well. And then finally, we just draw the map and then reset the shader. Uh, then I've just set up a simple room with a view to show you guys how this works. So you can swap the map by pressing F and swap the skin palette by pressing G. If you guys are interested in implementing this in your own game, I will leave this project in the description of the video. I also added this debug view that lets me alter the character's sex, skin color, hairstyle, and hair color. I render these details onto the skins using surfaces before they are applied to the maps. Eventually, I plan to move the logic to a character customizer that the player can use when they start a new character. As you can see, the system is very powerful if you have smaller scale sprites and you don't want to have to animate every last detail. It's very easy to implement other systems as as well. For example, if your character got hurt, you could add blood to their texture, or if they got dirty and cleaned off, you could also add that to the texture incredibly easily. If you like seeing behind the scenes for game development and learning tips and tricks like the one I just taught you, then you need to go watch this video right here about the first year of development for my game return.